This article is called Powering a Brighter Future. More than 1 billion people worldwide have gained access to electricity in the past decade, improving their health, education, and incomes. What's behind this incredible progress and what else can be done in the coming years? For years, when the sun went down around 6 p.m. in Derek's hometown of Rufunza, Zambia, the whole community plunged into darkness. Without access to electricity, Derek and his neighbors in their rural village in southern Africa couldn't simply flip a switch to turn on lights in their homes. There were no street lamps to illuminate nearby roads, nor was there the glow of cell phones to help brighten a room. The complete darkness made it difficult for young people like Derek to read, study, or do their homework at night. But in 2019, a creative solution changed Derek's life. That year, a light library was put in place at Derek's school. The program works just like a traditional library, but instead of checking out books, students can borrow small solar lamps to take home with them. Now Derek is able to sit under the light of the solar lamp for an hour and a half every night to complete his homework, his schoolwork. The light library was set up by an international charity called Solar Aid, and Derek's teacher, Mutinta Mucello, helps run it. Soon after the program was launched, Mucello began to notice a difference in Derek. She says he used to struggle in class and had difficulty reading and writing. But since Derek has been able to use a solar lamp, his grades have improved. He has turned out to be the best reader in the school, Michello says. Over the past decade, stories like Derek's have become increasingly common. Since 2010, more than 1 billion people worldwide have gained access to electricity, which has helped improve their lives. In fact, the number of people without electricity dropped from 1.2 billion to 210 in 2010 to 759 million in 2019. That's according to a report from several international organizations, including the World Bank, which is dedicated to reducing poverty. Experts say expanding access to electricity is key to strengthening economies, improving education and healthcare, and creating high paying job opportunities. Energy is really the foundation of everything, says Mark Carrado. He's the coordinator of Power Africa, a U.S. government program run by USAID that's focused on electrifying communities in, Act in Africa. That's why officials around the globe have been working toward an ambitious goal, to bring electricity to everyone worldwide by 2030. The aim is one of the Sustainable Developmental Goals, a series of targets set by the United Nations that are meant to improve the lives of the world's most vulnerable people. In addition to increasing access to electricity, other goals include ensuring gender equality and combating climate change. Despite the major challenges ahead, Parado is optimistic that the United Nations electricity goal is, in within, is within reach. It's totally doable, he says, but it's going to take a lot of people working together. Sustainable Developmental Goals development goals. In 2015, the United Nations adopted 17 goals aimed at solving major global problems by 2030. In addition to universal access to electricity, other goals include ending hunger, improving girls' access to education, and strengthening countries' ability to respond to natural disasters caused by climate change. Over the past six years, world leaders, private companies, and aid groups have been working to achieve these targets. To learn more and find out what you can do to help improve life around the world, visit the website below. Many people of the United States and other wealthy countries may not realize how important electricity is to their daily lives. You and your friends may not think twice about reaching for a snack in the refrigerator, spending hours in front of the TV, or charging your phone in an outlet. But without electricity, hundreds of millions of people worldwide can't do any of those things, let alone run computers, fans, or microwaves. About 75% of them, roughly 570 million people, live in sub-Saharan Africa. The vast majority are in rural areas, many of which aren't connected to an energy grid. An energy grid is a large network, sometimes hundreds of thousands of miles long, that delivers electricity to homes, schools, businesses, and other places. As a result, people in communities like Derrick's often have to light their homes with kerosene lamps, which can be expensive and inefficient. Others burn clumps of grass or use candles, which produce only small amounts of light and can cause house fires. 11-year-old Alinafi of Malawi, a country in southeastern Africa, for example, once fell asleep while using a candle to study for an upcoming test. The flame ignited the blanket she and her younger brother were lying under, as well as the straw mat beneath them, leaving Analifa with burns up and down her arm. 
Candles bring accidents, says a leader in Alanifa's village. This is a problem for my community. Many people without electricity also rely on wood, coal, or charcoal as fuel to cook their meals and heat their homes. Burning such materials releases harmful smoke and fumes, which can lead to serious health problems, including heart disease and lung cancer and even death. In addition, some families have to spend up to 10 hours a week collecting wood or other materials to burn. Such tasks often fall to women and girls, who in many low-income countries are responsible for all household chores. That takes up valuable time that could have been spent on other important activities, such as schooling, paid work, child care, or even sleep. In recent years, however, governments, private companies, and humanitarian groups have made expanding access to electricity a priority. As a result, the World Bank estimates 90% of the global population has electricity today, up from 83% in 2010. That means more and more hospitals around the world can now run life-saving medical equipment, farmers can power water pumps to irrigate their crops, and shops can stay open after dark. Experts say the African nation of Kenya is among the countries that have made the most progress. One recent government initiative there has helped millions of low-income households connect to the nation's energy grid. Kenya's leaders have also made huge strides in expanding access to renewable energy, including wind and solar power. In 2019, for instance, the biggest wind farm in all of Africa opened in northwestern Kenya. It covers 40,000 acres and includes 600, 365 wind turbines, enough to power hundreds of thousands of homes. Renewable energy has also benefited Malawi. Thanks to a recent partnership between Power Africa and local solar companies, nearly 58,000 families there have been able to install solar panels on their homes. That has helped people like Chrissy Kasawi generate electricity to power lights and appliances. My children are now able to get their homework done and study even at night. I'm also able to charge my phone and listen to the radio at any given time. Hundreds of millions of people in India, a country in South Asia, have gotten power in recent decades as well. Among other initiatives, the government has helped to make electricity more affordable and reliable. One program in particular has helped lower the cost of energy efficient light bulbs from equivalent of about $5.50 to less than a dollar. Saving money on electricity has helped many families afford food, clothing, and other necessities. This helps immensely, says Mom Tabarwar. Barwa, a mother of six who uses some of the money she saves to pay for her daughter's education. For the past 150 years or so, humans around the world have relied mostly on fossil fuels, such as coal and oil to power everything from light bulbs and TVs to cars and factories. Those non-renewable energy sources are considered dirty because they release carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, which trap the sun's heat close to the Earth's surface, contributing to climate change. That is why many communities, including in the U.S., are transitioning to renewable or clean sources of energy, including wind and solar. Renewable energy produces little or no air pollution, and thanks to recent advances in technology, it's becoming increasingly reliable and affordable. Solar costs have absolutely plummeted over the past two decades, says an expert on clean energy at Power Africa. She and other experts say the expanding access to renewable energy is key to meeting the world's growing electricity needs without damaging the environment. Still, experts note that some of the recent progress in expanding access to electricity slowed last year because of the COVID-19 pandemic. For one thing, as the global economy suffered, many workers lost their jobs or earned less money. That made it difficult for people to afford power. Governments and private companies faced financial challenges too, and certain electrification projects had to be put on hold. Many officials, however, have since stepped up their efforts to improve energy access, in part to help respond to the COVID-19 crisis. After all, electricity is needed to refrigerate vaccines and help diagnose and treat the disease. SolarAid, Power Africa, and other groups, for example, have focused on electrifying hospitals in Sub-Saharan Africa, where more than 70% of healthcare facilities lack reliable power. Such initiatives are extremely important, says Marianne Mwal, a lab technician at a health clinic in rural part of Zambia. Her workplace recently acquired solar lights, and she says they've made all the difference. You need light to examine your patients and to run lab tests. You can't do anything, not even the simplest things, without light. Indeed, experts say the pandemic has highlighted why electricity is so important and why even more needs to be done in the coming years to make it available to everyone. 
the International Energy Agency, an organization that helps governments shape their energy policies, warns that without additional efforts, 660 million people worldwide could still lack electricity in 2030. Roughly 8% of the global population, 85% of them would live in sub-Sahara Africa. To reach the UN's goal, experts say world leaders, private companies, and aid groups will have to significantly increase investments. The IEA estimates that $30 billion per year will be needed to help countries reach universal energy access. Continuing to electrify schools is especially important too, experts point out. About 230 million kids worldwide currently attend schools that don't have electricity. According to the UN, that hurts students' chances of securing high paying jobs in the future. Corrado says officials also need to focus on making electricity services more reliable and affordable and on expanding access to renewable energy. Derek, for one, is evidence that investing in electricity pays off. In fact, his whole family has benefited from his school's light library. His mom uses the solar lamp to help her see while she's cooking dinner. And before bed, Derek and his siblings gather around the lamp to share stories and talk about their day. Meanwhile, Michello has continued to see improvements in Derek's schoolwork. He now dreams of becoming a teacher, a goal that's within reach, thanks in part to something as simple as a solar lamp. I never thought he would get to where he is now, says Michello. It's so amazing.